Warning, the following contains depictions of adult themes, drug use, and wanton violence, sometimes flat-out war crimes. Listener discretion is advised. This is Starforge, Stones of Fortune. Starring Carlos S. Solrock, the Seer. Ramses as Merrick, the Unseen. Jose as Jimmy Reigns, and Luke as Spike. And I am your guide, your host, your editor, and all those other things, Redstone, also known as Adam in these recordings. I didn't think that any of that stuff was going to come around and bite us in the ass. Murderer. What was it that had happened in the last session? That one of them was trying to recruit us? Was it the... Oh, that was, was the guy. That was the Promethean. Yeah, so that's the the guy, who, the the Legion, who is yeah. in charge of Promethea. And, like, like, literally what they found out is, like, the people who are running the government, those people are actually just one AI. Like, it's literally one hive mind running. A hive mind. Where would you like to see the story go? What would you like to see for your characters? Fuck, I'd be down with some rebel shit. Some world domination shit, yo. <laughs> oh, fucking up. Galactic domination. I'm with that. Well, first things first, we gotta take over one of the three. I feel like putting Jimmy Riggs in power isn't great for the forge. BB does what you ask it to do. So if you're like, I want I want to murder hordes of people, it's like, okay, this is normal, <laughs> right? You, I'm learning what it, it means to be a conscious being from watching you for. You have fucked up some of the major powers, like their big plan. You know, because you don't know a ton about like all of their belief stuff. But you know that it's the Mormon Federation who pushed the whole anti-AI ban. Uh, they are scared to death of AI, and they because they have a prophet, and he's been telling them like, an AI is going to try to take over all of space, um, and AI is going to try to enslave us all. He may be a crackpot, but what he's saying is 100% on the money. You guys jump into this system. You're in orbit around a desert world. Black Box comes over and he's like, I, I have an anomalous reading. I am reading that the vault's location we, we are traveling to is now here. You start checking out the platform and it's 10 foot by 10 foot. You make a circle around the platform and then you, you start to like step onto it. It turns on the center of the platform. A circle appears. It's floating in the air. It kind of looks like a, a TV screen in that it's black, but it somewhat reflects. As you look around this, this object, you find it, it is two dimensional. There is no width to it. This is a one-way passage. If you put something through it, it will get sucked to another place. And the reason why it's black is that it's one way. Okay, I push those days. Alrighty. <laughs> do, do, right, I, come up. I mean, are you are you okay with that? Are you okay with getting pushed in? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um. So we'll come back to what you see, but. On this side of it, nothing happens. Like he goes in, uh, it kind of like as soon as he like kind of breaks the barrier, it's kind of like he gets like, it's almost like he then fell, like like if he were falling downwards, but he falls into it and just kind of. Whoosh. Oh you know, shit! You don't okay. hear nothing. You don't. <laughs> I didn't like try to get on comms and be like, hey, was it you there? You don't get anything back. 
Radio silence. No, nothing Ooh. back. I hear him. <laughs> Ram's just experiencing delusions. <laughs> Merrick. It's normal. <laughs> um, alright. What do you guys think now? I push move. Hey. <laughs> alright, I get pushed. <laughs> alright. You guys hear, so that's, he gets, the same thing happens as soon as he touches, hit any part of him breaks the plane of that circle, he just falls in. All right. I look at Ram, and then I push myself. Is that right? <laughs> With the fucking presence, the presence of <laughs> <just> Carlos. <laughs> so, so Mary. Nah, was... Oh, so the problem too is like, so you you haven't seen you haven't seen Nas in a while. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> so much. So you're standing on this side. Do you want to wait for him? Do you want to? Nah, man, I'm 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 a follower, bro. I'm okay. following the crowd. Damn it! Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, as each of you comes in, uh, you find yourself alone. Uh, oh, what the fuck? That's creepy. As in, like, we got separated. Yep. Oh and yeah. This is some like interworkings of a forerunner structure. Sheet, okay, guys, we should have held hands. <laughs> oh fuck, that probably would have worked. <laughs> what if our hands were separated with us, from us? And I'm assuming one of you or all of you try your comms at some point. Um, yeah. You, and the weird part, I you gather information. Okay, yeah, let's do that. So that'll, is he's got a plus two wits. I need somebody to roll. It's a five versus a one and a six. I hate this game. That's a strong hit. Why, why do you hate oh, this game? Okay, never, never mind. I lied. <laughs> <laughs> he just doesn't like losing. <laughs> yeah, strong hit, man. Come on. Yeah, come on, man. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah. So strong yeah, hit. He didn't win. Uh, strong. So you, you, um can deduce from what little signals you're getting from your comms, it does look like uh, everybody else their their communicators are over on this side of the port. Like you you they are somewhere in range of it, but something is blocking the communication. So it's not you haven't been separated to the point where like you're on a different planet or something. Because they work they're pretty long range communicators. Um you, <laughs> Um, uh, but you're not getting any communication back. You also can't see any position. Like, normally, you'd get, like, you could figure out where, where one of your guys are with relation to each other, because it's got sensors and stuff in there. But it's it just, like, you, you're not getting any communication from them. You could just see that they are here somewhere, but everything's diffuse. Um, when While you're looking around... It's it's only lit by the lights that you brought with you. Um, no. You you find yourself in a corridor. So you're at the end of basically like a dead end corridor, and it just goes on in front of you, uh, beyond where your lights currently shine. You look up, and it looks as if uh, you don't see a ceiling. Uh, the the lights shine up, and it's just blackness above you. Oh shit! Spooky. Yeah, uh, and I will echo, echo, echo. Yep. And so you, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, you do not hear anything but your own echoing voice back. And this is what you all, all of you see. Did I hear? Did I hear Luke's echo? You do not hear anybody but your own voice. No matter how, if you, if you can yell for a while, if you'd like. Actually, let's 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 focus on one at a time and see see how things go for you. Um, <laughs> uh, wait, let's see. Jose, you got pushed in first. So, uh, so what are you first. doing? All right. At this point, I 
my pistol out and along with my shoulder lights flashlight out. Okay. And I'm just scanning the room, I'm trying to touching walls, trying to find out how to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, so you can see, so the corridor is about six feet wide. Um, okay. So you could you could touch, you could almost touch each. Actually, I think you're you guys big enough. You probably can touch both walls. Yeah. Um, uh, there's no ceiling that, that you can see, uh, and it, the corridor goes forward as far as you can see, which isn't that far. Like maybe a hundred feet with the lights you've got, maybe. For the walls, unfortunately, are kind of a, um, they're like a dark green. The material, as you kind of touch it, feels uh, synthetic, um, but it's hard. But it, it's, you're not sure what it is. You can't scratch it, but it doesn't feel like metal. It doesn't feel like stone. Um, yeah, it has like kind of some sort of like plasticky synthetic feel, but it's, Hard. Okay. Interesting. What would you... Uh, five minutes go past and nothing happens. Still nothing? All right, I'm, I'm just gonna... Fuck. Can I... On, on my... Sh- on my little radar thing, you said I can see where, they're, where they are in relation to me? No, no. Normally you could. You you oh, see that I they can't. they are you you see that their signals are out there, but there's no you're like ah. it doesn't make sense how that could work because normally if you're if you see that they're there it means you're getting some sort of signal from them but it says you're not getting a signal, um, but oh. you you are reading that they are there is the like the carrier wave that like you guys talk to they're on the system you see that they're logged in. You just can't see where they are. Um, Fuck. Yeah. All right, I'm going to just go down down the hallway then. Okay. Uh, it stretches before you, and it you walk about a mile. And Dang. it just, it literally stays the same width. You still are not seeing a ceiling... And then finally, after it's a mile, so you know, we're five minutes worth of walking, um, it starts opening up into the, the walls uh, start spreading out to the point where uh, within another hundred feet, the left wall and the right wall, if you're if you can keep one in sight, but you can't keep the other in sight if you follow it. Otherwise, you can try to keep walking straight into just the darkness. Okay. Uh, I, um, I think we're gonna we're gonna jump from from Jimmy Rings and go to uh, Spike, who is next through. All right. I look around, gather some info. Right, you you will find out everything that that uh, Jose has found out. Like you do, if you okay. if you Thanks. walk, you walk a mile, and then you start losing the wall. Okay, I follow the left wall. Follow the left wall. All righty. Uh, Always left. Cool. Um. So it it seems like yeah it it just starts it. You don't even notice at first. Like, I mean, it's, it is until you're like, oh, shoot, these are getting a little farther away from each other. It's it's taken a bit. And once you get to the point where that where you start having a problem, um, it still doesn't feel like it's curved or anything. Um, and you you walk for. At least a mile more. And actually, let's see. Oh, oh, it's in the bike here. That's what I'm looking for. Well, it's, I know it, it's at this point you start hearing the voices. Ooh. Um, and I think we're going to jump from that to 
Oh, then it was, uh, Carlos, you were next to throw yourself through the, the portal. <laughs> and it, same thing happened. So you get here, it's a super long corridor. Uh, you follow it for five minutes worth of walking that feels like forever, but it's probably just a mile. And then the walls start going away from each other. Uh, what do you do at this point? Uh, walk into the darkness. You just go into the middle? Yeah. All right. Also, is my Banshee with me? Yes, your Banshee is with you. Oh, wait. No, wait. Did your Banshee... Um, No, your Banshee wouldn't be with you. Because it probably... Because if you just pushed yourself in through the force, it wouldn't have come in at the same time. So... Okay, let's go. Yeah. But yeah, walk into the darkness. All right. So you start walking into the middle of the darkness, and that's... You very quickly start hearing whispering voices that you can't make out. Oh, shit. Do you just keep pressing forward? Um, can I like reach Nas here? Can I just like haunt it? Um, you can try to reach out. The I will say one of the things you've noticed is every time you've been in a vault, you've been unable to talk to him. Like usually or pretty quickly, it's been pretty unlikely. Um, but if you want to go ahead, go ahead and make the plus heart roll. It just I'm just letting you know it, it's going to be limited. Even if it's a strong hit, it'll be limited on, on what happens. I hear voices. Go ahead and roll that plus heart. Let's see what how that goes. It's a one versus a one and a six. All righty. Um, so you, you don't, you don't get Nas. Um, he hasn't actually, you haven't seen him since you were, uh, had, had the whole thing out about that the um, that the Legion might give him a body like he he was yeah. uh, so you haven't seen him since then but so you reach out into the presence and you're trying to reach reach Nas but instead you are able to connect with one of the voices in the darkness um, you're able to pick one out in particular and um Basically, once it notices that you've made the connection, it notices you like it, it's it's now focused. Its attention is focused on you, but it hasn't said anything like it's gone quiet. But you can tell you've made that connection. Cool. Can I impact that? Yeah, yeah. So that's the way. Um, what would you like? Um, I'm going to let you ask uh, a couple questions, basically, of this voice. Uh, what, like, what would you like to learn? Um, I mean, and they don't have to be questions like "Tell me, voice," blah blah blah. It's what are two things you'd like to learn from from this connection? Um, who are you? And where are we? Okay. Um, so first you get um, the where are we question, because that one's actually uh, easier to answer. You get um, in your mind, you can see that the the black mirrored circle that, that you stepped through was basically a uh, a wormhole that sucked you and dropped you here. And this is a place, um, luckily, 
you have been traveling back and forth to Mr. E's. You have some understanding <coughs> of what it means to be outside of like time and space. And that's yep. that is kind of that is where this is built. This is built into the place when when the the vaults come like come in and out of the tides of space and time. And this is the place in between that. So you are inside the vault, uh, but you're not you're not in your universe anymore. You're someplace very close to it. It's like if you could just take a, a step to the right of everything all at once, you just yeah, you just be there. And that's this is a stable place in that right now. Um, and then what yeah. was your and then who is um, what you connect to is um, it is the presence, but it's the presence in a way where it's uh, been awakened. It is it is a bit of the universe, much like our own consciousness is our ability to recognize that we're part of the universe, that we're both like, I am myself, but I'm also part of this. It's this. This is somehow the presence itself has like somehow uh, kind of much like how Nos is like his own person in the presence. It's like this, but it's um, instead of someone being alive and experiencing the universe, this is the presence itself developing a sort of personality. And uh, that is due to you understand that that's part of the the vault here, the technology that makes that allows it to be outside of space and time that allows basically time doesn't pass here. Um, uh, you're realizing like you you will you are although you've been like if you got injured, uh, it would hurt, but you, like, it's unlikely you, you might not die, but, like, you're not going to get hungry. You're not going to get tired. Um, here it's a very strange place. And, uh, yeah, but the, the, the voice that you're, the, the, the consciousness you've connected to is a bit of the presence that's awake. Um, it's just and, consciousness. I mean, it's it's uh, yeah, it's it's almost a pure consciousness, but it's it's been created by this place, by the ascendancy technology, uh, for a purpose. Like it's not, um, it's not an accident. And this is uh, yeah, but it's that's. I mean, the problem being is that it's such an abstract thing. It's it's that's as much as you can glean from it, and uh, but you know the presence is basically uh, the the technology of the vaults interacts directly with the presence in a way that like um, you you're not you're not that good. You don't know anybody is that good, and. Um, the way this is manipulating it and it's like a machine or something like you don't know what this like it's the vault itself is doing this and you know uh can so, i ask you to turn the light uh that is actually as much as you you basically you you make the connection and you get the image of like where you're at and and what it is in it uh so the problem is so so you got that weak hit um, it knocks you on your ass, and that's you're not able to connect to it again. But now the voices are quiet. Oh. Um, okay. And we're gonna jump from you to Merrick. Are you there, Ram? Hey. Does anyone hey, else? Hmm? Ram, you there? You're all kind of frozen on my screen. <laughs> yeah, everyone's frozen. Uh oh, I Maybe can see you guys. Okay, I'm gonna hit restart again. And then they had technical difficulties. All right, let's see. We, oh yeah, we were seeing what Merrick was doing 
when he comes into he's the last one to go through the circle he finds himself in this super long corridor he checks the communications and sees that his friends are logged on to the network so they must be somewhere planet distance at least to him but cannot see where they're at gets no response hears nothing to his screams except for his own echo wanders down that corridor about a mile where it starts widening and sees that it just goes into blackness what do you do now to I become one with the darkness and just keep going so okay when you say you become one with the darkness do you mean you're reaching into are you using your shade ability or are you just walking oh you are yeah to feel more comfortable okay cool um I just keep continuing until I see something of value. Alright, well you um oh wait, it's just a thing you get to do. It's it's set your die. Alright, so you you start reaching into the darkness and suddenly uh to you everything goes uh bright. Uh no like it does not blind your eyes though. It goes just goes from it's like a, a, a reverse image where suddenly all of the darkness that was there is now you can just see. Um, And it's this room just opens up into, it's a giant room and um, you still can't see the ceiling because it just seems to go, you're not sure if there is one. Uh, The white just goes upwards forever, but you can see the walls going out. You can see that they go and it's just a giant circle and it's hard to see as far as it goes but there just doesn't seem to be much in here. Um, and you're, you're, you are looking, you, I'm assuming like, you know, you'll, suddenly it turns white and I'm assuming you just like take, you know, get, get your bearings, make a, a circle, 360. Um, but when you do the 360 and you get back, you suddenly out of the corner of your eye, as soon as it's possible, you see that there is someone standing um, maybe 20 feet in front of you uh, in an all black suit. Um, they they kind of look like uh, Aram Taran, except that uh, you've only ever seen Aram in the, uh, the denim overalls and the white t-shirt and the white apron. Um, uh, but it's still a bald head. Uh, he's the person in front of you has the black, all black eyes, um, has kind of that bulging belly. But otherwise, I mean, it looks like it's Aram Taran just in a totally black suit. And it just looks at you with unblinking black on black eyes. You know what I'd do if I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, straight up. I was thinking of shooting that thing, but I'm like, what if it's one of these people? Yeah, I don't wanna accidentally cause another war. <laughs> see. I guess I'll try to communicate. First and foremost, before I start shooting, what? I'll say hello. Hello. It, it looks. It it doesn't move. Its arms are just at its side. It's actually, if any, its its palms are kind of like, kind of facing you, so that its arms are just out a little bit, just in a very like, I have nothing to hide. I have nothing. Like, it's being very non-threatening. All right, well, I'll ask hello. him, where am I? Um, you are in an in-between place. Ooh. Uh, you, you are, when you entered that, <laughs> that portal, it brought you just 
and it, it it looks at you and you can and it's not a painful experience but it's an unsettling experience to have what you the best way you just had your mind read like basically it, it felt like very on the surface but you felt it like and it it basically looked in your skull and pulls out it um something on the order of uh a third of a nanometer outside of of the forge as you understand it we're just that just a just a tiny step out of your of your universe oh shit all right well what about the the three people that went before me are there somewhere nearby could i get to them um they are they are as nearby as they are just slightly less uh slightly less out of step than you are they are in the same space at time time doesn't matter here um in the same way they are you you will see them um you will be reunited when you leave this place <laughs> if you leave this place uh oh um okay and we're gonna jump oh, away from that this is a trial we're gonna jump <laughs> away from you and okay. jump to jose who is who is stumbling in the dark, but he's got his lights over to the left as the whispering starts. I take my pistol out. Yeah. Oh, we already got it out. Yeah, you got it out. You do not I start panicking. Flashing my light everywhere. Who's there? <laughs> you you see <laughs> nothing paranoia. but darkness, man. Nothing but darkness. I, I turn on my night vision. <laughs> uh, Do I have any night vision? Yeah, uh, you go through. You've got multiple modes. You've got infrared. You've got uh, um, yeah. You've got night vision. You've got a few different things. You've got a bit. Oh, you find a, a bit that will actually send out a sonic pulse. It it uh, it's like a one. It takes a long time to reset, but uh, I say, you, oh, actually, let, let's do let's do a gather information for you and see how that goes with your plus right. two wits. Luke, would you mind, sir? Carlos. I'll let Carlos do the honors. Die. <laughs> he got a six versus a three with that. Six plus two, so it's still just gonna be a weak hit. Um, um, I'm gonna say you you kind of freak out a little bit because you hear the voices and you kind of keep your back to the wall and you circumvent the room. You realize, and it takes you a little while. It takes you probably like half hour because you're not going that fast but you're, you're keeping your mm -hmm. back to the wall and you keep hearing voices and you find it feels like you've gone in a full circle and you find yourself back at the entrance to this room what? okay and, and it takes you a while to do that um so let's while you are doing that we're jumping to spike was next um and what was it? So you you found this, you found the darkness and the whispering, and what did you do? I uh, stuck to the left wall and just followed that, taking every left turn. Oh, okay. So you you quickly make your, so you're hearing the voices, and you can keep keep this wall to your left, and you will do a full circle, uh, and you'll come back. You're pretty sure you're right back to where you started. Um, and and you just okay. you heard the voices, but that was you just hear them whispering, and as long as you keep to the edge, they just they just stay whispering, and if you come back down this hallway, the whispering goes away. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I, mean, I guess I walk off into the middle now. All righty. Uh, so as you start to do that, we're gonna slip. We're gonna jump back to uh, Soul Rock, and uh, so you you were talking to a one of the the voices. Then what happened? Where did we leave you? For what? I'm trying to remember where we left you. Yeah, yeah. So the voice, like that person, they went off, or they still there? Uh, you still feel the connection. You still feel the connect. You you got knocked on your butt after getting the image of where you were at and who they were. And yeah, so so you you sit back up and yeah, you you can reestablish that connection. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that's good. Can I ask, um, like, where I'm supposed to go? Like, yeah, I, so you, yeah, you reach out, you, you, like, what am, I, what am I looking for here? Yeah, reaching out, that's that. Yeah. Uh, and then that is when things go a little wonky. Um, this is when the the room for you changes from pitch black to everything's white and you can see the size of this room uh but instead of it being empty there is a ship in the middle that looks a lot like the other three snub fighters that are on board of the nimbus and uh yeah there is a person there who looks a lot like Aram Tarum. He's wearing a pure black suit. So black on black on black, black tie. Uh, he's very pale, has the white within white eyes and is bald. Um, looks like Aram Tarum, but then at the same time, Aram has that, you know, his face doesn't really emote. Uh, it's it's psychic projection that makes you uh, get his emotions and whatnot. So this this person looks just like Aaron, though, but in 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 this suit, and they are um, they are standing in front of you, between you and the ship, and they go this this is all about you, this place, this this place here, you are the last. And you have choices to make. Uh, this uh, vessel of uh, that could be meant for you is it's powerful in in ways that I'm not sure you can understand. But maybe you can. Uh, this place, manipulates the presence in the same way your civilization uses um, electromagnetism and and the strong and weak nuclear force like you 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 manipulate matter this we are able to manipulate the presence if you board this ship if you bond with this ship it will have consequences for you. Um, I would not say they are bad, but they will change you. You will have as a great degree of connection with the presence in a way that you cannot turn back from. And you have to decide whether or not that you want that. That and also you will then be giving your group access to something 
incredibly powerful, and I'm not sure. You need to decide if that's a good thing or not, because... Um, and then you feel, you feel like, like Merrick felt it reach into your mind very gently, but you feel it like it's in your brain. It does not hurt, but you feel it rifle through your thoughts and your emotions and your memories. And it looks at every bit of you and, and goes, you need to decide if you, what this can do and what those four can do together. I, you have to decide whether or not that power is something that should be out there and used by you. If you want that, it is yours. All you have to do is step in and, and it is yours. But this was... We needed to take a moment so that you can decide this. And then this it disappears. No, this is the, the Soul Rock. Oh, okay, okay. Put the tip in, Carlos. Fuck it. You said it disappeared. Yep. It finishes that little speech. You f- you feel like you still you're still connected, but that you think. Um, just to be clear, you're pretty sure that what you saw is a projection of the the voice you were connected to. Oh. I'm thinking, pretty sure this is what we came for. I go, sweet, and then I jump in. Okay, cool. Um, well, as soon as you jump in, uh, so we'll, you, you get into the ship, and the floor of this room stops being a floor. Uh... And that is true for all four of you. Uh, the issue being three of you are not in a ship. Uh, actually, I think we jump and we see Jimmy rings. He starts firing his jet pack, but it's, it doesn't matter. He's now falling. You're all falling, falling oh, in. Okay. Um, yeah, but it, this is panic inducing for half a second. Uh, as you guys, you fall into the room, and the three of you that weren't, that aren't uh, Carlos, uh, you fall out into the, um, you're back in the room with the platform. You're on the other side of the circle. Uh, and hey. that, and the circle is gone, but you, the three of you fall together, like in a heap right next to, like on the platform. As uh, Soul Rock, uh, actually, you 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 get into the ship, and as soon as you get in, it like activates, and you fall into it, and you're you're you know you're you look like you're just flying through a hole, and uh, you pop out uh, right next to uh, the Nimbus. You're actually like nose to nose with it, and you're stationary, um, which, and now you're. Your comm is now connected with all all four of you can talk to each other, but three of you just found each other on the planet. Oh, no, I'm all sorry. Right. The Nimbus is on the planet. I'm sorry. The Nimbus is on the planet. You're up in the... Uh, Carlos, you're up in the, in orbit. You're, you're, you can yes. see the, the canyon below you. Okay. All right. I stand up and grab... Um, Merrick and um, Spike stand them up and I'm like let's go we got a signal from Carlos he's in space somehow we get back onto the sh- to the skiff yeah we have the same house yeah you guys are all able you're all pinging each other uh, you're I'm assuming you guys sent messages to each other at some point and they're all but all your you know, like, fuck, man. It's like turning your plane, your phone off of airplane mode. <laughs> and you're just, you're just, fuck. So many messages. Um, but yeah, you guys, you, you, you are able to make it back to the Nimbus just fine. You're able to talk with uh, Soul Rock directly before that. 
Um, I, you, if you want to come back to the planet land, you're up. To, you're you're welcome to do that. But you've 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 left the vault, and it's it's all good. Um, what would you like to do now? And and how do you how do you interact? How do you guys feel? We got the extended call and I can pick the ship, right? What was that? Yeah, you can dock on the ship with that. Cool. Oh yeah, yeah. There's. <laughs> Yep, you guys have, uh, at this point, you now have, I think, four, you have four, well, you have the four Ascendancy built ships, and you have two more transforming ones that you're just not, you know, you don't, they're not as good, they're human made. We just stole those, right? Just for the hell of it. You could, you could sell them, you can trash them, you can do whatever you want with them. You can use them as charity yeah. practice. <laughs> Put BB in one of them and have him do a spar with us. <laughs> yeah, he can do that. So crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, you, you guys are. You're, yeah, you're back at the Nimbus. You guys can uh, do whatever you want to do. Uh, do you want to go back to Mr. E's? I will say... you. Do, uh, one of the other things, too, is I will remind you, you are out of missiles. Um, you you can need always, to resupply, for sure. Yeah, you guys do need that kind of stuff. Um, going forward, if you want to add... Shields, missiles, uh, a lot of the the module stuff, we can do that for the snub fighters too. Eh. Okay. Um, you might want to do that. You might not. I'm just giving you the option that they're they're more than. Um, one of the things that also you can do. So I mentioned this last session, uh, but Merrick, you didn't get to hear this that. Uh, you will also, and I'm going to write this up. Um, so in Iron Sworn, in the base game, but in an expansion, uh, they he made this thing called like artifacts, where basically it's kind of like magic items, where it's an item that's just better um, if you do experience. Which I'm going to basically make it its own asset, but I'll let you guys see it and decide on it. But it's going to let you transform the mech while you're piloting it to like different shapes that'll let you do like it might be advantageous to be in like a humanoid form or maybe an animal form or something else like you can reconfigure the ship um but you'll have to bond with it like you you will like mentally connect to it and it'll yeah and you won't you won't use controls to fly it once you get to that point you'll be uh you'll connect mentally to it and you'll fly it with your brain directly Holy fuck. okay so um the other adva- the advantage to that is the rules for um for artifacts are that if you roll a six on your die when using th- the artifact uh, a six is an automatic hit um it it's an automatic strong hit so even so if it's six and a pair of tens now nah, you're fine you rolled a six um so it's like the one thing that can really and there's, you know, it, it's got a lot of other flavor to it. And we'll talk about that. But um, yeah, that's what I'm going to be introducing. I'll, I'll send that to you uh-huh. guys because um, you filled another box of your discoveries track, nice. which gives you another two experience to spend. Um, yeah. How many experience does that mean I have now? I actually have to figure that out. So it will it's 14 total uh, since the beginning of the game. Um, Mm -hmm. But I don't know how much you've spent. Uh, I thought I thought you might have had two sitting. So you might have six now, but I'd have to look through. Um, Definitely had two sitting from the last time. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Actually, you spent those asset things right through the through that email are we actually that's what we should do we should have I should oh either this or a google doc I have not been updating the google 
the Google Doc with your characters. So, that would be good. That would help us all. Uh... But yeah, uh, so one of the things I did want to bring up is since you are, since you've all had access to D.Va, if anybody wants to take any of the, like, uh, the assets that are, like, the presence kind of stuff, the magic-ish kind of stuff, like the firebrand, the kinetic, the impact, any of that stuff, if you want to do that, you, you're welcome to start taking those. Um, She's just hanging out on the ship. No, she's been hanging out at Mr. E's. Uh, she's on uh, the ship with you sometimes. She hasn't. She didn't go on this mission with you. Okay. And we still got that um, latrine boy in here, right? <laughs> latrine boy. Latrine. Yeah. Or did he stay at Mr. E's too? That guy that was just hanging out with us. Oh, he's just in our ship. He left after you've you've had a bunch of missions where people have ridden around for like a mission. Um, oh, okay, okay. You okay. haven't had anybody new for a little while, I don't think. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think so either. I'm not. Re yeah. I remember handing a plunger and a bucket and a mop to somebody. Oh God! Oh my God! <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, after this. Uh, you guys are going to get a bunch of requests. Uh, the war is ramping up now with uh, basically both the Covenant and uh, the Mormon Federation and oh. the uh, they're pushing into the disputed territory more again. Um, it's like another push. There's another like elect another like seeming election season in Covenant space, and that always seems to kick stuff up. Um, and some, I don't know. You you hear rumblings in in both of those empires about problems that are 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 happening. That um, yeah, I mean it's just they're 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 fighting again, and so it's gone back to a hot war. Uh, fleets are meeting in space and leaving just huge amounts of debris. Um, oh, but the bale fire, the, basically hyperspace storms have uh, abated a bit and that's what's kicked off like, oh shoot, now we can send a fleet and we don't have to worry about it being destroyed. Um, we'll show up and destroy it by shooting at these other people. Um, but you're getting more and more requests from places in the disputed territories of like, hey, would you guys come help us? Or could you, um, you're just gonna get a lot more of those kind of requests and it's whether or not you guys wanna take them or not or have them pass through to you. Like you could put a filter on your email if you don't want it. Uh, so let me know. Um, otherwise, that'll be a lot of your mission options. Okay. I wanna, I, like I wanna throw some hands, yeah. Uh, the other thing is too, you also have um, oh, you, uh, one more sector has gone, uh, it, and it was actually, uh, so they've been coming in from like the edge of, uh, kind of like known space, and come in, um. And, and making a line, and so a, a, a tenth sector has collapsed, or been found like fried, due to and another message was sent out. It's the exact same message that, that you guys heard before. Um, Fuck. Yeah. What? Yeah. Okay. I, I, we should, um... We should head to one of these sectors and see if we can't get any clues as to where they might be going. Or can we have BB do like a scan or like a data collection of all the systems they attacked and like see if maybe there's any correlation? Like are they all systems we've been to? Are they hunting us kind of thing? Uh, there is some of that. There, there. Uh, BB is able to give you like a. 85% certainty they'll probably hit this sector next. The if one you... we're in now. We're going no. in solo, though? 
That's the we can't go. We can't do that because like. Damn, bro. I mean, that, that is the thing. So you guys know where it'll be next base because it is has been following you. So that is that is part of it. Like, you know where the next sector it'll likely hit because of where you are now. You can change that. You could um, you have the option of potentially leading it to someplace else because um, where it's going now is you're so where BB's directing you is the next habited settle, like where the next settlement that would likely get fried. Because there's there's like systems where it might be broadcasting there too, but you know that that's like there's nothing there but a star and some rocks, or it was an asteroid belt that like you were at. So those places like it doesn't matter that it shit there it was there, but you know the next habited place it'll be. Um, it is. Actually, what is the name of this place? Ooh, it's the Crimson Web. Um, it is one of the place. Oh, it was uh, one of the. Uh, you felt that a few different um, places in in disputed territory, and this is one of them. One of them. It, it's it's one of the places you were at. Um, it's got a a colony that's uh, in orbit around a planet. And it's a few thousand people live there. Okay. Okay. The question is, do we leave this thing anywhere where it can kill people? This has just been pulling up and shitting on whole systems, right, Adam? Yep. <laughs> yeah, would you... you, you make a phone call, so, ba- like where it's going now is not undefended... But, uh, I mean, you haven't heard much about, like, like, it sounds like it goes in, drops this message, and it's just the message that fries everything. They're not attacking anybody other than they drop this message and it just fries all your electrics. And if you're a space station or if you're, you know, on a planet and you have to have air filters because the air's toxic or anything like that, or if you're a ship in orbit... Yep. Oh, your systems went down. You might be able to get them back up. And if you can't, I guess you just suffocate. Oops. Um, Damn, okay. Yeah. Um, So you could... uh, Yeah, so BB is able to... Like, if you were to take this path, you could lead it uh, through uninhabited space for a while. But eventually, you're going to have to pick some place for it to land. Uh, Like, or... I mean, like... It's hard to like keep leading it, because uh, basically it means you can't. You have to keep not landing at inhabited places, and eventually you're gonna run out of supplies and shit. So you can lead it on a chase if you want for a while. Um, you can lead it to, you can lead it kind of wherever you want. Currently, it's like I said, it, it's about to land in disputed space. You could lead it to Promethean space to Mormon space, to Covenant space, if you wanted. Um, it just depends on who you... Yeah. What kind of target you'd like it to land on when it lands oh, on somebody. Could we use Ram's deception to trick Legion into thinking that this thing's a problem for it? I can. Yeah, I'm a... What is this? Scoundrel? You want to trick I'm it a- how? Like, I don't know, put like have a meeting with uh, Legion or something like that and tell it that something's coming after it or something. Well, Legion well, was. Go ahead, Luke. No, I was just going to say, they're the ones that told us it was coming. It did. Oh, God damn it. Yeah, it was like, hey, you yeah. should join with us. We can try to protect you. Fuck. Like, like, do okay, you not know this is coming? It. We're like, we're, yeah. we're here trying to get you on our side. And the only way to take care of that truly is to, um... And so... I, give him Nas. No, that that's for the Legion. The Horde is sending a message that they're coming for you. There might be a yeah, way but, to, like, talk like, to the Horde. 
How did we talk so to the Hordes? Are the ones that are pissed because of your war crimes? Yeah, the yeah. Hordes are the ones that are that are the they're an undead horde coming to bring justice, or if that's what they say. What if we give him Spike? <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> you can walk. I I will say here. You also have the option. You don't think like you talk with BB, and BB thinks if you just hung out at Mister E's, they never get to the bodega. They might kill okay, every. They might kill everyone else, but they would never get to you. I like that idea. I know he said don't lead anyone to him. But they but can't get we to can him. Go, we really can go real quick. I mean, part All right, let's head to Mr. B's. All righty. Is that okay with you all? Is that what you want? Yo. Cool. All right, you guys travel to Mr. E's. Uh, as normal, you know, you show up. There's the big flashy neon signs. You get grabbed by the tractor beam. You go through the... into the big crack in the side and... Land in your normal parking spot, Sierra one three three seven, right? Something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, you guys are in Mr. E's. Mr. E, Mr. E, we need a reef supply. That's for show. Not so bad. hold on, we've been doing all these missions. Uh, we've been getting a lot of rewards lately. You payment. Yeah, you've gotten uh, you've yeah, gotten a lot of stuff. Yeah, so at this point, you've got a lot of uh, from a lot of from some of your battles. You had salvage rights to a bunch of stuff that's like basically worth money that you could just sell um, by you know you could do that over the weave. Uh, you've had <clears throat> uh, you've got a lot of favors out there. You've gotten money. You've also got money. Um, you could probably just, uh, real, real. you could probably buy missiles in the forge, uh, from people. Mr. E doesn't do cash. Like that's not, a, usually hits favors. Harder system. Yeah. He's, he's always, he's got a lot of what you need and he'll do, you know, a lot of time, like, well, if you need it, he'll just give it to you. He just might ask you to help him out later for something with something. Damn. Yo, Adam, what? Yeah, I, I'm a weapons master, so I have access to many weapons. Yeah. Um, do I have access to a those like grenade launchers, like that aren't like just a fucking like a simple like yeah. multiple arrow grenade launcher? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, sounds good to me. Word, and can it have? Different grenades, like grenade, like a smoke grenade, and like a oh yeah, some Absolutely. other kind of grenade. Absolutely, no. You've got all, all right. sorts of different ammo. You've probably got a thing that shoots a glue goo that could right, travel. Right. Yeah, you basically you're like, well, I need a thing that does this. Um, like if it's really wild, I might check. Have you check gear? Which it, like you roll plus supply okay. and just see if you have it. Um, okay, okay. But you can have wild shit. So. Um, yeah, like, I could see myself rolling, like, if I was like, I need a 1500s Pirates cannon or some shit. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, yeah, I would understand needing to roll for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, is there anything you want to do here at Mr. E's other than resupply? Can we talk to Mr. E about what's been going on? You absolutely can. Up. He would love. He loves hearing what's going on out in the world. Um, this yeah, is like let's, how let's we have a conversation with him. All right. Um, well, you haven't talked to him since before you met Legion, so he's kind of shocked about that. Um, seems concerned uh, and worried. Uh, I mean, this so, is with him. Do, do you tell him everything, or were, do you hold anything back, or? Um. Yeah, you know, talk to them and tell them everything. Fuck, <laughs> What did you say, Jose? Nothing, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, okay. I just wandered through his shop looking at stuff while you guys talked to him. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he lets you know if you think, well, one, um, he finds it interesting that, uh, that Legion is in, has taken over Promethean space. He finds that weird. He's like, so I've been, I, you know, I've been watching uh, Black Box grow, and I, I think someone had to have tampered with that AI, if it, in order to like conquer things, in order to want power. Like that's, Fuck it's designed bitch. not to want power, because that's, I mean, other, like, why would you design an AI that 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 would be a bad idea to design something smarter than you? that would want to take you over. Like, you want to make sure it stays a tool if that's what you're going to do. Um, so, like, built into the Ascendancy AI hardware would it is limits on that. So it sounds as if an external force, like, if that is what it's doing, and it sounds like it is, because, like, you've, you've told me, and it, it sounds like, if you ask me, that the uh, those those triplet sisters that are on the Covenant Council, those are probably those are probably Promethean agents. They're probably Legion. Like that's literally it says it's taking over uh, the Covenant space. It's probably literally got those three people there as votes it controls. That just, I mean, triplet sisters or something like it's got to be masterminding that. Um, oh, okay, I see. Uh, so that's that's disturbing though, because that's that's that means that Promethea, those sisters have been voting for the war against Mormon, the Mormon Federation. They've been pushing that fight. So that means, so yeah, so Promethea is fighting in this war just through another power. Um, I would say I'm fairly terrified by the idea of an undead horde that's coming after you. That sounds really bad. Um, uh, if you know where it's going to go, you might want to at least, as just an option, leave it a message that you've at least received the message. And maybe it would stop oh. broadcasting. Um, I mean, it might be something to try. I don't know if that would work, but... Uh, you don't have to be there yourself or I, I don't know. I just uh, you you might I would consider contacting it some way, maybe not going directly. But if you want to go directly, you can do that, too. That might be the. But I don't know. It sounds like there's a lot of ships. Uh, the reports are very vague and they're it's hard because like you're like, oh, my whole ship, all my sensors went out along with my life support. The thing you're going to fix is life support. You know, oops, talking stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, that's my other suggestion. Um, uh, to be honest, though, I, I the the idea of aligning yourself with any of these powers, uh, I don't know. It, it seems like it's kind of against what you what I thought you guys were for. But that's up. To, I mean, uh, I don't know. I I, I kind of. Uh, was happy to bring you guys into the fold because I thought you were against uh, this whole these religious orgs ruling the uh, the forge. So I don't know. That's what I I'm I'm about, and and I hope you keep helping me. And uh, but it's up to you guys. I like I can't make decisions for you. You're all adults. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you have any other question? Do you? Now that he's caught up, do you have any questions about anything else that's going on? Can we ask about the encrypted uh, message by the ships? The horde, though? Mm -hmm. That's the horde. No, no, no. No, the... What was it? You mean like the ships we just got? Yeah. Oh, uh, like that ship? Yeah. Yeah, we could. About the, sh the the four ships you guys have found in the vaults? Yeah. Um, so, uh, hmm. Aram actually wonder if, like, he... 
he asks if he can, like, check them out. Um, he hasn't really taken a look at these. You've never asked him to help with repairs because it hasn't really been an issue. Um, but are you okay with him, like, checking them out? Like... Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. So he starts digging through and looking into them and um, starts basically pointing out some stuff, like how it's a little different than other snub fighters. Like, there's a button that appeared... And I think it was like Merrick's ship, but it's you've all noticed it now. And there are certain controls that it's weird because you're just like, I would have sworn there that button wasn't there to begin with. This looked a lot more of just like a very basic ship. But the longer you've been flying them and been around them, the more you're noticing little differences that there are extra features that somehow were hidden, like extra button, where you're like, it's right there. It's just like the escape key. I just never noticed there was an escape key before. And um, he starts, you know, like, I think this is some of the ways you might access um, the feature. So he, uh, he ends up like getting you guys a meeting with somebody you had met before uh, one of your first missions. You met someone who was an expert in the Ascendancy and went with you to Dagobah. Uh, that person, um, it takes like a day or two, but they show up and they look at the ships and they they basically explain to you guys that, yeah, there's uh, a way that you can connect to the ship and you would bond with it. It seems as if each of these ships is actually possibly meant for... It seems like it's built for a particular type of person and like like this ship and they're like looking at the one that the most recent one you got. And this one is very attuned to a particular it's uh, it, it it's like got a particular tuning to the presence. Uh, this uh, which the ship is, does the ship does. Well, two of them do actually this one over here and it and it's the one and it's. Uh, it's the one where the button appeared for you, Merrick. It's like this one is also this one's attuned to the presence in a way that basically uh, I, I think it can make itself invisible. And I think it, it can bend like light around more than just itself. Like it, it has some ability nice. to focus darkness, uh, uh, obfuscation. It's got some other properties. I'm just, I'm not familiar. I, I'll be honest, I'm an expert as, you know, for what humanity knows about the Ascendancy, but I, there's still so much we don't know. Um, but like, yeah, this ship does, you know, controls that. Uh, it has some sort of connection with that. And I think if you find someone who who matches the right personality that they could bond with the ship and control it directly um but i i have to warn you though i've i've seen that kind of technology it it can change a person um it can connect you uh there are the way the ascendants communicated uh later stages uh, was in ways that didn't use language. It was direct thought to thought communication, and yeah, you could you just have to be be wary because it can. Um, I don't know. I've heard story horror stories. I don't know how many of them were true because of how many accidents have been out there. But I've heard of people's personalities being overwritten and wow. uh, frying that person or just changing them drastically. Um, I, uh, there was a colleague of mine. I actually, I knew, knew a uh, James, uh, James connected to an ascendancy device and he never slept well. He's never slept well since he perceives the universe in a different way than he ever did. And he keeps staying all, he hears whispering all the time. And I don't know, it's, it's made him kind of crazy. Mm, yeah okay um but again but those are these are things where uh this is us finding objects and trying to use them and i do think if the right person used this that a lot of those negative effects might be mitigated 
or the fact that you're already in tune with the I, I it's a dangerous proposition uh, it's an exciting one it seems like it might give you greater mastery over over the machine than normal and uh, but yeah don't don't lose yourself to it though that could be scary it also seems like it has there's some other feature that like the four of them together do something but I I it's beyond me what that could be um, it, it just doesn't I see like weird connections so like he points at like a, a bit on the fuselage of one ship and you see like do you see this this port here there's no nowhere else on this ship is there any connector that would go into that and I don't see how or why it's here but if you look at this ship over here that's got to be the other side of this right like like these two that seems like it hooks into that but how and why and and he over here and he points out you know other connections and it just seems like somehow these connect but how that works why you would want to do that is i i don't know that just seems weird so <laughs> Fucking mystery, called his guy. <laughs> He's like, let me call my guy real quick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mystery has got connections like those guys at uh, Pawn Stars. Yeah. Like, well, I'm not an expert, but I know this expert, you know, stamp collector. Boom. Like that's what he does. He he's the guy who knows the people and makes the connections, and just helps people out. And it's like, oh, here I know a guy, or oh, I got this piece of equipment. You should do this. You should. What if you uh, went and checked that out? Like he sent you on a lot of missions where you're like, what if you went there? I don't know. Something good could happen. So, yeah. So he he makes that connect for you. Um. But yeah. Um. Yeah. You guys. Uh, as you guys take, if you take some time out to to fly, it's pretty easy to figure out which ship should be whose like i don't know there's something about like you know like oh, i think i'm gonna take a, one of these ships out. oh i want to take that one out and there's something calls to you and you know and very quickly you each know which one is yours um i'm curious guns or something <laughs> what was that does mine have like extra guns or some shit yeah yeah i think that's it like it, when you get behind uh, your ship, uh, the what you realize it's yours. You're just like it does. It has more weapon systems on it, um, yeah. and there a lot of them are hidden. Like it just it's like oh, well not only this I, um, like yours already has like uh, you can tell it's got connections for like a missile rack that uh, you're just like oh yeah of course that's a missile rack oh I I could get one of those and I you could do that and there's a bunch of different things you could do with it where you realize like yeah it's got guns um oh. but yeah uh so your your ship actually has already on it the extra asset that's a, so that's the thing it's like you guys are gonna find this out anyway so um Merrick's has the the cloaking device or the what was it called again ability the shadow uh no stealth tech the, oh yeah stealth. oh stealth yeah on the tech. ship yes but you will find out that you can actually make it cover if you if the floor you can make it cover an area around your ship that's like a mm -hmm. great size for like three other ships to be right next to you. Oh, so word. you could cloak the whole crew. Um, um, Spike's ship has the engine upgrade. So you can actually like, yeah, so you, you got better engines. Uh, and yeah, and uh, Jimmy Rings' ship has heavy cannons on it. Nice. Yeah. Uh, it is not clear what the last ship you guys found that is for uh, Solrock. It It is... It doesn't seem to have stuff that's special. Um, 
that you can tell for now. Ooh. Yo, we gotta go help these rebels in a fight or something, dude, and just take the damn ships out. <laughs> Let's do it. Come on. Ask Mr. E, where's, you know, where's the nearest strategic battle? And yeah. who are we attacking? Who, who, who do we want to attack? That's the question. That's, uh, that is exactly who, what he would ask you is who do you want to blow up? <laughs> I feel mis- like we have a long term plan against the Prometheans. We don't really have to target them right now. You want to fuck the cover? The Mormons are fighting them and doing the best. So we probably leave them be so they can both weaken each other. And the Covenant's just kind of the Prometheans' puppet. So I'd say let's go after the covenant. Cool. Covenant, it is. All Um Let's see. I'm actually thinking this. That might be our next session. Is that we, you guys, gear up for a go for a big fight? Um, But call it for uh, this session. Or that. Yeah. Sounds good. Cool. I could use a nap. Oh, I bet. I bet. Uh, thanks for playing, guys. Enjoyed it. I'm glad glad to get some input on what you guys want to do in the future. Because, uh, oh, wow, I've gone pitch black. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it seems it's I've got enough light coming in from the window that it seems OK in here. But I guess the camera don't like it. So. OK. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, thanks for hosting and doing those videos. That was cool. Yeah, yeah that shit is awesome, dude. I'm going to keep doing like the the viral news stuff because like I gave you guys yeah. one before and I it's fun. And so that way it'll give yeah. you it's a fun way to be like here are some options in a mission too. Like like or here pick pick one of these missions. Like here here are here are yeah. the news stories. So Yeah, I like that. That was cool. Yeah. Cool. It's pretty Well, that's what I'll have for you guys next time. Um yeah. I think you thinking for next fish uh, I guess say when should we play next? How are you guys feeling? And what's coming up for you guys? I'm not doing uh, it. Though. Well, let's take the holiday off. I mean, I could do next weekend. Um, or if you want to wait with the holiday, go for like the weekend after. Sounds like we had at least one that wants to wait. Yeah, because I'm pretty booked up this this next this week coming up cool. with like my schedule. So, uh, so do we get for me? Yeah, same. Preferably next week or the following week after that. I mean, so like Sunday. To learn what happens, keep listening. This show is brought to you ad-free by Privilege. No ads, no Patreon, just a cishet white man with disposable income and time. It is performed, edited, and all that good stuff by Redstone Archender. The story is powered by the game Iron Sworn Starforged by Sean Tompkin. Outro by Glitter Snitchel, channeling the spirits. This has been a Sofa King Cool production. This week's episode featured music by Tabletop Audio.